this this was a hit tweet for me for some reason um where i talked about like the the stuff with uh the one billion mark for movies and uh geek vibe nation is the only place that did this but it kind of set me off i got a little bit triggered in the middle of the night like social justice warrior triggering <laughs> um will deadpool and wolverine become the first movie or the first film to reach one billion since no way home did back in 2021 the first marvel film mm -hmm. and we've talked about this in a lot of detail here and i don't mind it being like a topic of discussion but i feel like it's kind of it's kind of taken over like a film success on like making yeah, a billion it jumps to the like, it jumps ahead of the question will the movie be good right which right, just which is, like, yeah. Yeah, I said my I mean, the constant a, obsession over how much a movie makes has ruined so much of the fun I mean, being a fan for me. Can we just talk about how cool the movie looks, how much fun it might be, how exciting it is to get this team up, stop being concerned about the studio paying rich folks. And that's what I, mean, I said in my tweet. It's the same thing. I mean, look, we're just talking about Furiosa. Like, everyone's going on about it. But, you know, it, it's, it's a prequel with not the main character from that movie. And it's a movie that only made like 350 3670 worldwide mm -hmm. like 10 years ago yeah. like it's not gonna be a massive blockbuster hit like in regards to like about 500 yeah. mil like everyone's like focusing on that it's the other thing is like even when people get out of watching a movie and it's whenever i hear someone's first point is oh the cgi slap in the face like cricket bat baseball <laughs> bat <laughs> boxing glove uppercut shut the fuck up mm. that's like a minor detail what about the characters the story and everything like that and people go straight to like vfx and stuff like that gives me the shits yeah, also <laughs> um, like, it's yeah, the also same with this it's a, but it's like that's the equivalent of like this in, in regards to like going into a movie like who cares right. how much it makes especially with this like you know deadpool's going to continue it might you might be the last time you see hugh jackman's wolverine but i think that's the whole point of the movie as well like you like who cares about how much it makes like the ones that matter are like eternals or something like that those yeah. are the only ones where I'm like maybe you can be a concern be concerned like oh i hope people go see this this really needs to do well you yeah. know it no also, i mean it's just it's you're going to three i'm oh, sorry it also feels like it's uh um like it had another agenda with posting this by dissing the other mcu projects exactly yeah yeah probably i can see that look i mean I, before we even knew that it was going to be called Deadpool and Wolverine, before that even came out, I said that this movie is probably going to be a successful movie for Marvel. It's Deadpool. It's yeah. probably going to be a successful movie as long well, as the they... Only, yeah. yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say the only thing that arguably goes against it is like the blatant like not trying to hide that it's R-rated. <laughs> in the, in like, the, like, what did I see? Was it, it was either Planet of the Apes or Furiosa when I saw them. I think it might have been Planet of the Apes because that's Disney. So right. that's a Fox movie. So, that's, so it must have been that. And they were playing this. And there's a lot of swearing. And people were like, whoa, what the hell? Like they weren't you because it had like the Marvel Studios thing come up and it started swearing mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. There's a couple of people that went, look at the, what the hell? So I I do wonder if that's the only thing that pushes it off being as successful as some might predict it. Yeah, to be. maybe. But I think a lot of Deadpool fans would riot if they tried to like sugarcoat the movie mm -hmm. and make it like I, a, yeah, a family yeah. friendly movie so well yeah we'll, we will probably one. see almost guaranteed we will see deadpool in other movies where he's not as outrageous as he is in these films like if you see him jump through the portal and come into the mcu and he's in an avengers movie he'll be there to make quips and stuff and be funny but we're not going to see him talking about like teabagging people and stuff like that it's not going to be in a in an avengers movie you know um why oh, okay i was gonna say in the deadpool movie because i'm doesn't he make like multiple blowjob jokes? No, no. In the Deadpool, I feel like the Deadpool movie is like no holds barred. But if he's in another movie as Deadpool, I don't think they're going to make the movie. Oh, it'll be like it'll be, it'll, it'll be this thing where he like, honestly, <laughs> don't be shocked. I bet you anything, if he shows up in an Avengers movie, whatever it is, they bleep him. Yeah. No, they, I, like there's literal, literal bleeps that happen on screen, and he's, and he's and he's like he looks at himself and he's wondering why he can't say so. <laughs> yeah. <words>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. think what's going to happen is uh, like he's going to hold a card and saying this scene is rated R. Fuck. Yeah. Something stupid <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. So Anthony, I did see people getting mad about an ad. I don't care about ads. Like if like if a movie's making an ad where the characters are in a film like promoting or an isn't that just specific chains though isn't that one yeah, chain yeah. That's yeah it wasn't it wasn't or they just yeah. had to do a ton to put the goddamn phones away 
Well, yeah, that was the one. It was that was from um the was that from CinemaCon? I think it was from CinemaCon when they did like the preview or something. I think that's when that was. But I don't. I'm not sure. Either way, I don't care about that stuff. Like this is what I'm talking about when people start talking about the quality of a movie. Talk about the go see the movie and then talk about if you like the movie or not. Like all of this other stuff. And Anthony, this isn't directed towards you because obviously you're not agreeing with that or whatever. But oh, the actor said this in an interview, or the director said this in an who gives a fuck? Like who gives a fuck? It's Look, such a stupid I mean, argument. The, I mean, the only other thing that might stop making money is the fact that it's so expensive to go to the movies now. Yes, I went is. twice this past week, and I found the hack. I just get a senior ticket online and just claim it online. And they, yeah, and they never and they the never question you because they just, they never, they just mate, it's twelve bucks cheaper. And then yeah. they, they, honestly, the workers probably just don't care. They don't care. They're not getting yeah. paid enough to care. Who gives a fuck? Um, the thing is, though, uh, talking about sales of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine broke a pre-sale record for Fandango. Um, so far, uh, this is the it's the highest ticket sale for any R-rated movie ever in pre-sales. As uh, actual... Hollywood Reporter reports, the tickets broke pre-sale records with AMC theaters for, for Fandango, revealing that they already sold roughly two hundred thousand tickets, far more than any other R-rated okay. movie. So no, no, I wasn't too sure so if it was like, R-rated ticket sales. Yeah, yeah. So in yeah, R-rated... so it sold it's had a, it sold more pre-sale tickets, not dollar yeah. amount, than any R-rated movie. So. I'm pretty what, was, what was the other one before that? It, it doesn't say here. I'm assuming um, Joker, maybe. Probably. It says well, the trade source indicate the film right now, based on pre sales, it's going to generate um, a d- domestic opening weekend above 100 million based on pre sales. So, I mean, it should. I mean, like Wonder Woman did like 110. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, this, this, like, um, preemptive like oh it's it needs to make this much or i'm gonna shit all over it seems like such a reductive way to yeah, like, uh, i don't care how much a movie makes it movies. good yeah, cool it's not hey that's cool too how many movies have we loved in our lifetimes that were not big hits at movie theaters it's been a lot of them it's been a lot of them so i don't necessarily care if a movie is a hit at theaters the only thing that really matters too is if like a movie is going to be a franchise you know what i mean like if it's going to continue on they might cancel plans to do the the sequel or whatever. But at the end of the day, I just want the movie that I'm seeing to be good. So that's far, it. the kind of only right. movie that I actually hated going into theaters and being stuck there is Fantastic Four 2015. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, guar- guaranteed. Guaranteed because live action almost always does better than animation, no matter what. I mean, there's a few outliers, but... X-Men 97 isn't doing, like, ridiculously well. It's doing good for animation. Yeah, it's doing really well for animation and for Disney+, Plus. but I don't think... Like, like, again... But you know know what? The reason why is because that show was made for the fans of the show. It wasn't made to to reach out for a general audience. Yeah, if they wanted to make it for a general audience, they would have made it like the old shitty X-Men movies. You know why? And and I think I didn't see any advertisement for it. No. Like outside of social media, obviously. Yeah. And like, yeah, so the reality is, is Disney is really yeah. excited about it. It's the finale broke records for uh, finales on Disney Plus. Um, whether or not the show is more successful than something live action is irrelevant because it's successful enough that Disney is like planning four seasons already. So, I mean, I feel like that's a win for the fans. 